I did some experimenting with NPN transistors. And you might wonder, well, why NPN? Well, I've just got a bunch of them. Could use PNP, but I've got a whole bunch of NPN transistors. And we're going to take another look at this little amplifier that you saw in a previous video. And I've been having some questions about, oh, do we need the 470 resistor or the 10K or the 100K? So I'm going to disconnect them and we'll just see what happens. But first, I've got a small signal at the input and it's a thousand hertz again. And we're going to take a look at the output to see what that looks like. This is what it looks like at the output of that amplifier. And as I said, I have a very weak signal applied to the input. Now some questions I had was, do we need that 10K ohm resistor? And of course we do. And we also need the 100K ohm resistor. If I remove the 10K, well, the transistor goes into saturation because it's way too positive on the base. And the trace goes off the oscilloscope screen. And if I have the 10K installed and remove the 100K, well then it's too negative. The same thing happens, but in the opposite direction, the transistor is now off. And this is what it looks like. You just see a screen with no trace. So I put the 100K and the 10K resistor back. And for that 470, well, if I open that up, obviously that won't work because it's not connected to ground anymore. So what I did there, I just shorted it out. And I forgot to capture this on the screen, but the signal was uh, quite a bit bigger, but it had a flat bottom. In other words, it negative out. And before I could do anything, uh, I burned out the transistor. So we obviously don't want to do that. But what I did finally come up with was if I lowered that 470 to 150 ohms, we get a higher output and the transistor won't burn out. And this is what the signal looks like. You can see that the output is higher. Here I'll go back to the 470 resistor output. That's what it looked like. Now back to the 150 ohm emitter resistor. And you can see that the output is higher. Here I just changed the scope setting so we could see more cycles on the screen. So we do get more amplification changing from a 470 ohm resistor to a 150 ohm resistor. So now I'm going to use this circuit here to experiment with. Now on biasing transistors, it depends on a lot of things. The signal that you're going to be amplifying, uh, the output that you're going to be driving, and uh, how much you want to amplify it. In other words, there's not one cookie cutter biasing where you can use it everywhere. It depends on a number of things, mostly your input and the output result that you want. So I'm going to add another identical amplifier to this, and I'm going to connect the input of the second stage to the output of our first stage. And let's take a look at that signal now. I have not changed the level of the input signal on the first stage. We're going to leave it alone. So let's take a look at the output of the second stage. Here's the output. And now we got some pretty good amplification. Here I'm going to turn down the scope input a little bit so we can see the signal. But it's still, you know, this 
same amount out. It's just that now it's on the screen and it's a, still a nice looking sine wave, about a thousand hertz. So why don't we add one more stage to this? Okay, here is the third stage and it's identical to the first two. But before we get into this any farther, let's talk about why the 100K and the 10K. Well, as you know, that's a voltage bridge and from the base to ground, it reads dot nine nine volts for the bias on all three stages. Well, the 10K and the 100K ohm resistor are high enough resistance that they're not shorting out the signal very much. In other words, you could choose other resistors of much lower resistance and still produce a dot nine nine volts on that base. But the problem is if you use two lower resistors, you're going to be shorting out the signal. So that's why the 10K and the 100K ohm resistor. I have now connected the output of the second stage to the input of the third stage and now let's take a look at its output. Well we got amplification again but the sine wave is not as pretty as I'd like it. Notice that we've got a flat top on our sine wave which of course will cause a great deal of distortion. So let's go back to that third stage and see if we can't figure out a way of changing the bias on the base to increase the signal maybe a little bit more but also have a very nice sine wave output without any distortion. The fixed bias resistors 100K and 10K, I don't really want to lower the resistance. So I tried raising the resistance on the 10K and as I did that about oh two or three thousand ohms at a time starting at 10K then to like 10 or 14K, the signal started to get a little larger but also much closer to a sine wave. And this is what the final result was. If I put 18K in there we get this output. Here I have lowered the scope input again and as you can see it is a very nice looking sine wave. So with those three stages of amplification we've got a very very small signal and quite a bit of amplification at the output of this third stage. So I thought why don't I disconnect the input signal that thousand ohm signal and just add a wire onto it and this is what I got. That is audio modulation from a radio station and I live fairly close to 250,000 watt station which most of the time can be a problem but here it works out pretty good. You can see the AM modulation. So I decided well why don't I see if I can't hear something. So I hooked it up to this circuit and I didn't hear anything. So I took the wire off and decided just to touch the input of the first stage and here's what happened. As you saw in the video, every time I touched the first input stage, we got noise out of the earphones. And that's because I was way over driving it, and this is what that signal looks like. Notice that 
we've got a flat bottom on that signal. Okay, now here's the one where I had a wire hooked up and we're not overdriving anything, but we don't hear anything. That's because the energy above and below is equal. Well, when I overdrove this, the energy no longer adds up to zero. So we actually hear distorted sound out of the earphones. So if I were to change this somewhat, add a detector to it, and put a tuned circuit on it, we'd have an amplified crystal radio set. Let's take a look at the output or the last stage again. That earphone is about 2,000 ohms. So when I added that in series with the 1,000 ohm and the 100k ohm resistor, that means that the bias on that transistor is a little bit out again. So, but I don't want to change that. I did that on purpose because if I made it perfect, we wouldn't hear anything because the energy above and below zero on the oscilloscope, we'd see that it was equal. So nothing, no audio would come out. So I might think about uh, turning this circuit into an amplified crystal set. I'll have to think about it a while. Thanks for watching.